I wanted to make an infinity scarf and figured I would film it but then it seemed too quick and simple so I decided to make a matching hat and some gloves as well. The scarf is very easy so beginner friendly, it's just a tube with some grafting. A hat can be very simple but that's just not my style plus it's been very windy lately and my current beanie I'm scared it's going to blow off my head. I'll link a video where I made this in the cards. I decided to experiment with a split brim style so I can put the hat low on my head without my neck getting in the way. This will involve switching from a tube to panelling and also a little bit of ribbing. So maybe a bit more of an experienced um, or adventurous beginner project. And finally, the mittens are pat flat panel knitting um, with some shaping techniques for the curved top and the thumb um, with some seaming, um, but I would still say they're beginner friendly. So if you've just gotten your machine or you've had it for a while, um, hopefully there is a project here that interests you um, and something for every uh, level. Okay. So let's get started. Um, chapters are available if you're only interested in a specific project. So let's start with the scarf. Cast on with a standard cast on, weaving some waist yarn in front and behind each needle. Add working yarn and make one long tube. You want to ensure each stitch drops and that the needle picks up the next stitch. If both of these things happen, then you won't get any drop stitches. But if you do, don't worry, your project isn't ruined and I have a full video on how to fix and avoid drop stitches. I will link it in the description box and in the cards. So go at a speed you are comfortable with and complete 230 rounds. Every so often, you want to stop and just pull down on your knitting, just to make sure you haven't dropped any stitches. During this project, you will inevitably run out of yarn, so you can either join your new ball with an invisible join or any other joining method, um, or you can simply just loop your yarn under the needle, throw it in the middle, grab your new ball of yarn, pop it in, and it's easy as that. So, and then make sure that the old piece of yarn is catching this needle and the new piece of yarn goes under the next needle. I'm just going to hold them as I make a turn. And we'll make a couple of turns and then tie this in a knot. To cast off the machine, we remove the working yarn from the guide. Then with a darning needle and some more waste yarn, it should be at least as long as the circumference of your machine. Crank the machine and pick up each stitch. Start with one at a time, and as you grow confident and the fabric starts to loosen, you can do more than one. Six at a time is usually my maximum. When you get near the end, be sure to hold the last stitch down so it doesn't fall off before you get to it. The last thing to do is join the edges with a Kitchener stitch. An in-depth tutorial is linked in the description. And my infinity scarf is complete. I like that there's no cast on or off edges so the whole thing is stretchy and comfortable to wear. I tend to wear it just as it is, sort of folded over to keep my chest warm, but when it's really windy and I've got a nice big coat on, I'll double it up so it'll keep my neck and face warm as well. Time for the hat. Cast on all needles with the working yarn and knit 30 rows. On the last row, we will put the stitches from needle 45 and 46 on hold. Go back the way we came and at needle 1, we place needles 48 and 47 on hold too.
we have successfully swapped from tubular knitting to flat panel knitting. Now knit back and forth for 20 rows. I will do ribbing in the brim so I add a marker yarn to the next row and knit another 20 rows. Now for every other needle I lift off the stitch, ladder down to the marker yarn and then latch my way back up using a crochet hook. So let's pretend that um, my marker yarn was short on purpose so I could show you that if you do not remember to put the marker yarn in you can still just count down the rungs um, as you release them and then ladder them up that way but I do find having the marker yarn is a little quicker. Okay so when it comes to doing one with the marker yarn what you want to do is just put the yank just to make sure you're on the right track then can you see here where we've got the double stitch right here so sort of like you've got two smiles here and then the frown and that's where we want to stick our yarn our hook sorry so just pop that in there and give it a yank and latch it up Okay, and just to show you that again, so give it a little pull. Ooh, <laughs> take it off the machine first. And just to show you that again, so give it a pull just to make sure you're on the right track. And then you're just looking for the frown in between the two smiles. And just pop your hook in there and then pull. This creates pearl stitches and therefore creates one by one ribbing. Knit another 20 rows normally. Now we attach the on hold stitches back to the machine. And knit 30 rows in the round. Cast everything off the machine with your working yarn. In standard beanie style, cinch both sides and secure with a few stitches. And then put this part inside. And secure with a few more stitches and hide the tail between the layers. Now for the brim you can just seam up the edges and be done with it um, but as I want this to be windproof plus totally cute and adorable I'm going to do a cord with tassels. For the cord I doubled up my yarn and did a crochet chain with a 10 millimeter hook. When I had 30 chains I swapped to a 5 millimeter hook and did a slip stitch in every other stitch around the edge of the hat to seam everything together and to get from one side to the other. Then another 30 chains down to the other side. Now attach a pom-pom and some tassels and you have the cutest hat ever. And when it's super windy, you can hold the tassels or you can um, stuff them inside your coat for leverage. I actually wore this hat on the way to work this morning and my ears were so cozy and warm. And for the mittens, I'm going to cast on 30 needles and then I'm going to knit 29 rows. We need to do an odd number of rows and I'll explain why when we get there. Okay, so that's my um, 29 rows completed. And 
we needed to do an odd number of needles because we want to end the brim on this side just so we have this tail of extra yarn to work with um, because it is going to get tighter as we go around and um, so when we do it finish at this side we have this tail of extra yarn that we can work with okay so if you wanted to do ribbing on the cuff you would do this now and um, i'm not going to do that just because i did it on the brim of the hat so we're going to skip the first needle and lift the second needle and then if we take a look at this you can see that it's actually looping around like this weird stitch here um, we could attach that on the edge there, but I don't find it's necessary, so I'm just going to pull this yarn out of here. Okay. And then using the waist yarn to help me, I'm going to pull the first stitch up and put it onto the second needle and push it down to the bottom. Remove the waist yarn as I go and lift the next one. Using the waist yarn to help me lift the stitch onto that needle and just make sure everything is pushed down and remove the waist yarn. I'll change for a better angle so you can um, see it a bit closer. Okay, so I'm going to lift needle number four and lifting with the waist yarn. Place the stitch on the needle, remove the waist yarn, push everything down. We're just going to continue that all the way around till we get to the other side. Okay, so I'm on to my final stitch now, and as you can see, this tail is so short now. Um, I really probably should have left a longer tail, so I'll definitely do that if you're casting on. But you can see how much extra yarn we actually needed to get this on the machine, and how impossible it would have been if we'd done it the other way. So now we want to knit um, 28 rows. Um, and that will be for the hand. Now it's time to do the curved part of the mitten. So we're actually going to split this into two sections of front and back. Um, and I've put a marker on needle uh, 15 because I've got 30 needles. So needle 15 is the middle one for me. So I know that I'm going to want to do decreases starting here and here. And we're going to decrease four on each side and then we're going to cut the yarn and move on to the other side. So let me show you how we do that. Okay, so I'm turning back the way I came and I can see that this needle has fell off and so has this one. So I'm going to save those on some purple yarn. They're just on hold. Ooh. Make sure it goes under there. Okay, but we can actually cast this one off. I'm going to put that one on green yarn. There we go. I'm going to need that needle in a second. Back the way we came. not going to knit this stitch so I'm gonna wait till it drops under this pin and go back the way I came and then with another needle small waist yarn remove that from the machine And then we're going to do it again on this side. So back this way, 
don't knit this final needle. Back in and lift it off. Okay, so we've decreased two on this side. And now two on this side as well. Um, so I'm just going to do that twice more. Okay, so that's four on this side and four on this side. So now I'm just going to cast everything off. So I actually want to cut the yarn because we're going to need it for the other side. And that's one side of the glove complete. So got the nice curved bit going on there. Right. So now we need to do the same to this side. So. We need to put these stitches back on the machine, so add the working yarn back in and repeat. Now for the thumb, I measure the length and circumference using the mittens as my gauge swatch. Figure out how to make the thumb. So I want it to be 5cm tall, which is 10 stitches. I need it to be seven centimeters wide, which is also 10 stitches. And I need four stitches at the base. So I'm going to start by casting on four stitches and then increase till I get to 10 stitches and then knit 10 rows and cast off, but don't cut the yarn. Okay, so to finish off the thumb, we want to do one decrease round. Um, at the bit where we cast off where we have the 10 stitches so you can do this by knitting or nooking um, or by crochet I'm going to show the crochet version so starting at the end where the yarn tail is coming out we want to put a hook through the middle of the stitch so you can see here we've got a loop with the purple yarn going through the middle of the loop so take my hook and go through the middle of the stitch then we want to do the same on the next one. So find the loop with the tail going through. Put your hook through the stitch. So I've got two loops on my hook. Now taking this yarn tail, wrap that around my hook and pull through two. And now I have one on my hook, which will stay there. Then onto the next stitch. I'm going to go through the middle of the loop and through the next one yarn over and pull through two. Now I've got two loops on my hook. And again, through a stitch, through a stitch, yarn over, pull through two. Now we have three. I'm just going to repeat that two more times. So I've got four. And now I have five. One, two, three, four, five. So we've successfully decreased one row. So we can now remove this purple yarn and we're gonna use this yarn. So we want it to be as long as the thumb by three. And then we're gonna cut that off. And I don't have scissors, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this tail. And now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this yarn around there. And we're going to pull it through all loops. Okay, and actually pull the tail all the way through. Okay. And then this is the top of our thumb. So I'm just going to go um, and stitch this up a little bit more. Okay. And now we're going to mattress stitch down the side of the thumb. Okay. Once you've mattress stitched up your thumb, that's when you can bring in the mitten. Okay. And you're going to want to fold it in half. 
and starting at the joined edge you're going to want a kitchener stitch around the top just like we did for the scarf and then you're going to mattress stitch down the side continuing to try it on to check where you want the thumb to be and when you get to the point where you want the thumb to be you're going to change from mattress stitching this side to this side to instead mattress stitching this to here and be sure to include two of the cast on stitches on either side and then you should have a finished mitten it's so nice to have a pair of mittens that actually fit usually i have so much space at the end of the fingers I think my next project will be a pair of gloves with fingers um, so I might experiment with um, a thumb flap as well so I can use my phone. Okay, So subscribe if you want to see that. Otherwise that's all I have for you um, and now I have a matching hat, scarf and mittens to get me through this windy winter. I've already wore the hat and the scarf many times and I love them both. The mittens certainly need work, but I'm not sure if it's the mittens or whether I'm just not a mittens person. Um, so as I said before, I am going to experiment with some gloves instead. But otherwise, very happy with everything I've made today and I hope there's a project here that you will enjoy making as well. See you in the next one. Happy knitting!